In this video, we're going to discuss the symbols used to represent units, as well as common English to metric conversions. So what do we mean by the symbols? Well, if we have one kilometer, writing it out as one kilometer is a lot of writing every time we want to talk about it. So we actually have short versions of the units. We use short symbols to tell us what they all are. This would actually be one km. And so for our base units, the meter, the symbol is m. For the gram, the symbol is g. For the second, the symbol is the s. And so we'll stick for these for the time being. Anytime you want to talk about meters, you would say something like, oh, I have 72 meters. Well, if I have 7,200 meters, that is really 7.2 kilometers, so 7.2 km. The prefixes have their own symbol that gets put in front of the actual measurement symbol. And so we're going to discuss some of those prefix symbols. And so the kilo is a lowercase k. The centi is a C. Milli is an M, which that kind of occasionally causes problems with meters. If we think about that for a second, if you wanted to talk about 10 millimeters, it would be 10 mm. This is one of the only times this comes up. Milli and meters happen to have the same symbol, but you can tell the difference because, well, the M on its own is meters, and if there's ever two of them together, uh, an M in front of another unit is going to be a milli of that unit. Now, you can definitely still get things like 10 milligrams. You can get 10 milliseconds. That M just goes in front of the other unit. So we have kilo, k, centi, c, milli, m, and micro, which is the only non-standard alphabet symbol. This is mu. It's got a long front tail. Mu is what we use for micro. If you have something that is 0.00027 seconds, that is 27 microseconds. If we think back to our metric prefixes, a micro is one millionth, and so a very tiny number here of seconds is a reasonable number of microseconds, one microsecond being one millionth of a second. So these are the common prefix and the common unit symbols. Other ones, remember for chemistry, amount is the mole. And we'll eventually talk about temperature, which is the Kelvin, big capital K. Then um, you can have micro Kelvin. If you're ever trying to make something down near absolute zero, you definitely talk about the micro Kelvins of temperature of things. Not something we'll focus on a lot. Well, these let us then talk about and write our symbols much quicker, which is important when we want to relate different units together. And so for that, we need to talk about conversions. Standard English to English conversions are things like one mile is 5,280 feet, or that one foot is 12 inches. Well, for English, that'll be most of our conversions. You can also have metric to metric. These were things like 1,000 grams is one kilogram. And instead of writing kilogram out, Using the short symbols makes it much easier to kind of show this. So there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. There is a million milligrams in a kilogram. 
one kilogram. Well, what about going between the systems? Because we live in the USA, we still use the English system for most of our normal pronunciation of units. And so how do I go between these? So if I want to go distances, one mile is about equal to 1.609 kilometers. And if you want to do things like weight, you can say that, hey, one pound, so LB for pound, is just about 454 grams. Sometimes you'll see this written for a kilogram, so there's 2.20 pounds roughly per every kilogram. Now these are all approximate, they're about, but there is a perfectly accurate English to metric conversion for distance. Basically, a long time ago, the English and the US were arguing over the size of an inch. They had slightly different rulers that had been developed. They were slightly different sizes. And if you're doing taxes on trade, if one of you sends what you think is nine yards of fabric, but the other side says, no, that's 9.2 yards, pay more tax. Well, you need to sort that out. And so units, standardized units are important. US and England fought and argued, and eventually Canada came down and just said, guys, we're gonna average it. And with that stunning rebuke, you know, when Canada calls you out, you know you've done something wrong. And so we agreed to just average it. And what we found and what we've reset everything to is that one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. We remade every device for this to be true. So this is by definition, how big is an inch? It is exactly 2.54 centimeters. And so these are standard conversions of English and metric. Um, and we'll use them quite a bit. We'll talk about temperature type conversions later, but these are the important.